I do not mean to be disrespectful to anyone I talk about in today's video. The video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. The information I collect is from the internet. I compile this information, make a video and from this you guys are more than welcome to draw your own conclusions. Thank you. Hi everyone and many thanks for joining me. If you are new to my channel, hi, I'm Kat and I like to talk about true crime, conspiracies and all sorts of related things. If you are new here, please don't forget to make sure you hit the big red subscribe button below and also hit the notification bell so you are the first one to know about any new videos I upload. For my returning subscribers and viewers, I would like to thank you all so much for all those lovely comments I always read from you and for your continuous support. This is what keeps me going and also my channel. Thank you so much. Let's talk about the Red Shoe Murder, which is a murder unsolved for 75 years. It was on September 21st, 1946, that Norma Mary Dale left her home in Roden Avenue in the Tang Hall area of York, Leerthorpe, to play outside. Earlier, her mother had taken her to a Saturday dance class, then dropped in at her aunt's house on the way home for a cup of tea. She was last seen by her mother, Frances Dale, who was getting ready to take her into the city at about 3 p.m and was also seen at the same time by the next door neighbor, Annie Langan, who spoke to her. Norma Dale ran in from play on the Saturday afternoon and took a bun and then ran out again. Norma's mom could hear Norma outside chattering for a few minutes. She then went out to pick blackberries, but when she returned at about 3 p.m., Norma Dale was nowhere to be seen. When Norma went out, she was wearing a pair of bright red dancing shoes and a white dress. During her search at about 6 p.m., her mother Frances went to a lorry parked on the waste ground near where Norma was later found, but couldn't find any sign of Norma being there. A boy that lived on March Street, who was visiting his grandfather on Roden Avenue, was out playing with Norma Dale on the Saturday afternoon, sometime after she was last seen by her mother on the wasteland behind Roden Avenue near a back that ran through there. Norma and the boy were throwing some stones into the water when a man approached them and told them not to play there because they might drown. The man then told Norma Dale, come along with me and I will give you some money to get an apple. The man and Norma Dale walked off together across the wasteland in the direction of Milton Street, which ran pa parallel with Roden Avenue. According to the boy, the man was wearing a brown trilby hat and a brown overcoat. The boy told this story over and over again, and each time the story remained the same. So, in my honest opinion, this story is very credible. Please remember, this was the 40s, right? 1940s. Kids were playing outside unsupervised all the time. It wasn't usually as dangerous as it is nowadays. So Norma being unsupervised and left outside to play was something being practiced in that day and age. She was with other kids outside and the wasteland was just behind Roden Avenue where she lived. After Norma Dale was noticed to be missing, a search of the area was made and the police were informed. An appeal was then broadcast over the wireless relay system and the police dragged the back running through the wasteland behind the houses. Norma Dale's body was later found on the Sunday morning on the waste ground which was within sight of her home and beyond the bottom of a neighbor's garden at 93 Roden Avenue. It wasn't believed her body to be there for very long when it was found. She was wearing a white dress and would have been easily spotted by searchers looking on the previous Saturday evening or the following Sunday morning. She was lying about five feet from a lorry there and three or four feet from the garden fence of 93 Roden Avenue. Normal Dale's grandmother searched the field where her body was found on the Sunday morning at about 8 a.m., but Norma Dale's body was not there at that time. She also questioned two men who were in a nearby brickyard. Her body was found by 11-year-old Michael Duffy, a local schoolboy at around 10 a.m. He was also in the field with Norma Dale's grandmother at 8 a.m. searching for Norma Dale and said her body was not there at 8 a.m. Norma's father, Cyril Dale, 
left home at around 2 or 2.30 p.m. on Saturday to watch with his friend the Hayward rugby team playing, for whom he was a trainer. They both had tea after the match and Cyril got back home at about 6.30 p.m. But there was no one in the house. He saw his wife out in the street with other people who told him Norma was missing and they then searched the waste ground until midnight. Neighbor Annie Langan, who lived at 93 Roden Avenue, said Norma Dale was a friend of her daughter's and she often came to her house but she last saw Norma Dale on Saturday when she left her house at about 2.30 p.m. outside in the street by 111 Roden Avenue, Norma's house. And his husband Albert, a lorry driver, walked his daughter off to the gate at 2.45 p.m. when she was going off to a party and, that, and that's when he saw Norma Dale's father going, on, going by on his bicycle. But Cyril Dale, Norma's dad, denied this later on. Shortly before that, Albert believed he heard Norma Dale's mother calling for Norma. After seeing his daughter off, Albert left his house and crossed the wasteland, then went to a club in Warmgate, arriving at about 2.55 p.m. to attend a football match at Bootham Crescent with a friend. At the match, he stood behind the goalposts at the Bootham Crescent end. His friend confirmed they arranged to go together to the football match. They met in a club at 2.58 p.m. and gone off to the football match, then returned at 5.35 p.m. At the inquest, Albert, the neighbor from 93 Roden Avenue, was cross-examined by the chief constable and asked whether he was certain he saw Norma Dale's father go by on his bicycle at 2.45 p.m. Albert confirmed this, but he then added he could have been mistaken. However, he said, and I quote, I am sure I saw him go by. I spoke to him and said, have you lost the bairn? End of quote. The chief constable added the alarm was not raised at that time, but Albert insisted Norma was missing at 2.35 p.m. However, according to the chief constable, the alarm was raised only after Albert left for the match. The alarm was raised at 3.30 p.m. When confronted with this, Albert changed his mind and claimed he could have spoken to Cyril Dale the previous Saturday instead. The coroner then added, and you would not say have you lost the bairn? To which the man replied no. When the coroner asked whether Albert still wanted to be recorded as having said he saw Norma Dale's father go by on his bike, the man said yes. Albert also added he didn't see Norma Dale at all that day. Now, unless there are conflicting information online about this case and specifically about this lorry driver statement, I honestly find his answers quite confusing but highly suspicious. Is it in any way possible he could have been involved in Norma's murder? When the friend who went to the football match with Albert was questioned at the inquest, he said he met his friend every evening since Norma Dale's murder, but they never talked about it. When the coroner asked the friend if Albert ever asked him to say he was in a certain place at a certain time, he replied no. When questioned by the chief constable, Albert's friend said the match was between Darlington and York City and they stood at the main stand side towards the station. He didn't remember going round to the Bootham Crescent goalposts at any time, but said I was with a man from 93 Roden Avenue every bit of the time. When the chief constable asked him whether they parted company at any time, noting Albert saying they were behind the goalposts, his friend said, we might have been, but I think we were near the stand. At any rate, he was more or less on that side. Another witness, Mary Hamby, 15 year old at the time, saw Norma Dale running along Roden Avenue at about 2.35 p.m. A person from 7th Avenue saw Norma Dale at about 2.50 p.m. near the back, and Norma had been wearing a flowered dress. However, she would have been wearing a white dress. Mr. Glover, another neighbor from 91 Roden Avenue, drove his lorry home on that Saturday afternoon arriving at 2.50 p.m. and he didn't check his lorry again until about 10 a.m. on the Sunday morning. Norma Dale's body was not there, otherwise he claims he would have seen it. Norma Dale's body was actually found at that very same spot about 15 minutes later. 
At the inquest, Cyril Dale remembered seeing a lorry standing behind a certain house, but he didn't look inside it. The home office pathologist who examined Norma's body confirmed she had been strangled with considerable manual pressure. Experts determined she probably died sometime around the Saturday afternoon. The police didn't think she was killed where her body was found and they were trying to determine what happened to her in the 19 hours between when she vanished and when she was found. The police suggested her murder must have taken place in the neighborhood and her body hidden until a later time. I think, I think, honestly, I think that whoever killed her was probably a lorry driver and kept her body in the lorry until Sunday morning, disposing of it after 10 a.m. He was probably local to the area. He witnessed the search party. He saw when the search was, where people were in a certain period of time, so he took his window of opportunity and dumped her body by the lorry. Either the lorry driver who went to his lorry at 10 a.m. and said he didn't see Norma was the killer, or the killer would have seen the lorry driver there at 10 a.m. and dumped her body after the driver left. If the lorry driver who said didn't see Norma's body at 10 a.m. was the killer, then he probably dumped Norma's body at 10 a.m. that morning, kept her hidden overnight in his lorry. It is very hard to determine exactly who the killer was, otherwise the police would have done it already. It really is because there's not very much information available. But my honest opinion is, it was either the man from 93 Roden Avenue who said he went to the football match. His statements just seem really fishy to me. Or it was the other lorry driver who said he went to his lorry at 10 a.m. but Norma's body was not there. But then again, it doesn't really add up because why would you dispose of a body close to your own lorry? This would just raise suspicions from the beginning. This is honestly my opinion based on the information I have. I am not uh, accusing anybody. I'm just uh, talking, uh, you know, hypothetically here. The police took over a thousand statements during their investigation. The police searched 10 acres of waste ground looking for Norma's right shoe. The newspapers wrote that Norma Dale was the third young girl murdered in the previous four months. Okay, now this seems interesting. What if we are talking here about a serial killer? If it is a serial killer and let's say he is a lorry driver, it would be very easy to lose the trail. I don't know. I mean, I tried finding more info about which are the other girls the newspapers wrote about, but I could not find much details. I really do have a feeling that this might be a, ser a serial killer. I don't know, it just fits somehow. He had a very small window of opportunity, just around 10 minutes. He was definitely local to the area, potentially he was watching from somewhere around when the search party was going on. And I really, I really do think he did. He was, he was either in his lorry, somewhere outside, out of sight, maybe he could have done it even from his window. But this is the only way he could have disposed of the body without being seen. He knew exactly where people were at any given time. He knew the area by the lorry where Norma was found was searched at 10 a.m. So he either saw it or was part of the search and then he saw the area clear of people because they moved the search to another area and he just disposed of Norma's body then. And the only way he could have done that quick and without being seen was if he hid Norma's body in his lorry overnight possibly covered with something else and in that precise moment the 10 minute window opportunity he took her out of the lorry and left her on the ground so it's quite possible he had information that the search party is moving back to the area where he left norma's body i don't know you guys but it just fits if a serial killer and a lorry driver he could have gotten away with it this can suggest he's done it before his experience in concealing evidence and getting rid of evidence. Serial killers have a type always, they always do. The other three girls missing, I have a suspicion it would be the same person. He's a lorry driver, he's driving on routes that he knows and so it's very easy for him to follow, spot and dispose of without raising suspicions and without staying too long in one place. But I do believe he is local to the area where Norma's body was found. I'm not saying he's necessarily one of the two lorry drivers directly involved in the investigation. However, 
he is local to the area, either that or he visits someone living in the area quite frequently to give him time to learn the people, the surrounding area, the opportunities, the routines, the time. Please, if you do know about any missing girls from the surrounding area in 1946, please let me know in the comments below and I can look deeper into this. In October 2016, the police announced they were carrying out a cold case review of Norma's murder. In 2016, a cousin of Norma Dale, Ellen Powell, remembered laying at home after Norma Dale's murder pretending to read a comic book and overheard his parents and another relative talking about it. And from what he could remember, the person they suspected had an alibi for the 10 minutes, which was crucial to his statement and it was believed Norma Dale walked into the person's house and saw something she shouldn't have seen and she was killed because of it. Norma Dale's other cousin, Brian Dale, together with his wife Beth, wrote a book about the murder in which he named the murderer, but didn't publish it for fear of legal action as he named the murderer in it. The unpublished book was called One Red Shoe. Beth claimed she worked with police and compiled 30 files of evidence for two years which led her to name Norma's alleged murderer in the book. A woman who, at the time when the book was to be released, was still alive and living in York. She said she was restricted from publishing due to libel laws and had lots of death threats. Beth also claimed that Norma's late mom, Frances, who died in 2003, wanted the book published, but the immediate, but the immediate family of the woman she accused didn't. Norma was strangled and her body was dumped less than 60 yards from her Roden Avenue home. And despite an investigation that interviewed more than 1,000 people and drew support from Scotland Yard, her murder has never been identified. 75 years on, the case remains one of York's biggest unsolved mysteries. Alan Powell, 85 years old, who lives in Huntington, celebrated his 10th birthday the day before his cousin Norma died. He said, she had big brown eyes. That's what I remember most about her. Norma was a little younger than me and I used to tease her, but we were a close family. I remember grandma saying to me, Norma's missing. Tell your mother they are dragging the back. I remember the words exactly. She broke down because she knew what could have happened. Scores of residents lined the streets of Tank Hall to pay tribute as Norma's funeral procession passed. But despite initial optimism by police, nobody was ever arrested or charged with Norma's murder, which became known as the Red Shoe Murder, as only one of Norma's red leather shoes was found at the scene. Now a father of four and with four grandchildren, Mr. Powell said he was grateful his family didn't have to deal with similar tragedy. He said, 70 years on, it's no longer raw as it was at the time. And just being five, you accept these things more. Norma's great niece, Tony Dale, heard stories about what happened from her family and was given a box of newspaper clippings by her grandmother. She believes someone out there knows something, most probably a secret they'll take to their graves. And I want to quote here, I'd have thought with the technology they have these days, they could have found the killer through DNA, but sadly, it isn't the case. The only way we can try to solve this is through the papers. And I know my, my great grandmother would have been forever thankful for the press articles as she was when she was alive. End of quote. Mr. Powell said he was told the files relating to Norma's murder were lost when the former police station in Clifford Street was flooded several years ago. Quote again. The big letdown is with modern technology and science, I'm quite sure more could have been done. No doubt the original red shoe would have been held by police and there might have been DNA on that. You never know, but now it's probably lost to the river. It doesn't matter how good technology is, if it's not there to test, you can't test it. End of quote. If there is anyone who holds fresh information or evidence that has the potential to identify and ultimately convict the person responsible, please, please come forward. You can contact Detective Superintendent Day Maylin, head of North Yorkshire Police Major Crime Unit. 
thank you so much for uh, watching today's video again if you do have any information which you think might help please don't hesitate to contact uh, Yorkshire Police Major Crime Unit this is all from me for today's video thank you so much for watching please stay safe and take care bye